five. They have five campuses and five kids. How do you do it? I have no idea. I sat one last night. I said, I think I'm just going to go home and just go ahead and go under the bed and put the camera over my head. But I said, no, I got to get up. Are you the pastor of the church? Amen. Listen, we love having you here, but we're going to do something today. We're going to receive an offering to them for them. They came here, well, they came here with not expectation. We have a fee. They come here believing in God because they believe God sent them here. Amen. So I want to be a blessing to this church and bless back and sow seed. If you have a check, you can write it out to World Prayer Tabernacle and just put down Pastor Rick. Or if you go online, you want to give online, what you do, just put Pastor Rick, and we're going to do it all at one time. But I want you to know that we're going to sow seed back. People come here and impart things to you, and we want to sow back to them because, you know, your time is valuable. I mean, he had to, run, he had to get on the phone this morning with five churches, make sure everything's running right before he got here this morning. Amen? But they're here because they believe God sent them. How many believe that? Amen? you here today. Father, I want to thank you for the seed. I want to thank you for our friends. I want to thank you for our family, too. I want to thank you for their giving of themselves, oh God, and come here to, Lord, import something with us, just share something that the Spirit of God has given them to this church in this hour. And I want to bless them beyond measure. I want to take the limit off of blessings. And I ask that you would sow back, Lord, to them, oh God, greater measure, Lord, in importation. I bless their home, and I bless their children, and I bless their family over there today. Watch over his church today, that nothing go, everything goes smooth today over his church in Pittsburgh, over the campuses. I speak that, and I speak it over, and I bless them. Say, I bless them. I bless them. From the top of their head to the soles of the feet, and we love them. And they family here. You family, you family here, brother. Your family here. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor Rick, look, I'm going to turn it over to you, brother. That's it. You got it from here, brother? Well, my house is your house. Whatever the Holy Ghost has today, we all follow it, brother. Don't hold back. Amen. Amen. Don't hold back. Amen. Amen. You got it. Amen. Let's just uh, give Pastor Derek a big hand there. And come on, all the leaders here. Can you do that? Come on, you can do a little better than that. Come on, y'all doing good today? Y'all doing good? Come on, I'm trying to work on my southern... Uh, southern accent. I, I know I talk a little funny to y'all, and um, but that's you're gonna have to put up with that for just a little bit here. And um, listen, this is what we're living for. Um, we're not just trying to have a good Sunday. We're planting seeds to have a good decade. It's all about 2030, and that means we're planting seeds right now that we believe that are gonna bear fruit over the next decade. But how many of y'all know that a lot of things can happen in a decade? A lot of things. And the church you see right now here is going to be totally different in a decade. No, I mean, it's going to be totally different. I can't tell you how it's going to be different, but it's going to be different. There's going to be more people. There's going to be people that some of them are going to be like you, and some of them are going to be totally not like you. But over the next decade, there's going to be changes. But as we, as we walk through the changes and as you walk through them, God's going to have to direct you. And there's times when you're, you're, going to be, you're going to feel like you're losing. There's times when you feel like you're just breaking even. Uh, I, I play tennis, and uh, I enjoy tennis. I know somebody the other night down here said, is tennis really a sport? Yeah, it's my sport. Um, and I play, and a couple times when I've been playing over this last summer, I would get down, and I would be way behind. And rather than trying to win the whole match, I had to stop trying to win the whole match and just go back to trying to win one point. As a matter of fact, I would just get focused on one point. And I would say it out loud, just one point, one point, one point, one point. One point. And see, if I focused on one point several times, I'd start, I'd win a point, and then what I'd do again, I'd go, one point. And then pretty soon as I focused on each point, points turned into games. And then, it, then games turned into a set. And the set, come with the sets, turn into a match, and matches turn into history. And in our life, as we're keeping score, 
we need to realize that sometimes it's just decision by decision by decision. And as we make these decisions, we turn them into games, and games turn into life groups. And then pretty soon, life groups turn into more church services on Sunday morning. And pretty soon, all the sets start matching up, and it turns into more campuses or more locations. And then you get a match, and then that's how you make history. But we make history going back to one point, one decision at a time. So if we want to win a decade, it's going to take decision by decision by decision. Because after all, we don't need more entertainment. We need a lot more demonstration and participation. This is what we need, and this is what I believe Jesus is asking for here. Come on, Proverbs 29, 18. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most, they are most, come on, but when we get behind, come on, when we stop, when we stop seeing what God's doing and empowered to see that, we have to go back to the basics. Last summer, I'm playing tennis, I lost my forehand. I don't know where I lost it, but it was gone. And so I said to my wife, Natalie, I said, I got to do something about this. And so um, I went, hired an instructor. It cost me $120 to find my forehand. But it only took her a few minutes looking. And she goes, here, let's just play five minutes. She goes, oh, I know your problem. I says, do I get a discount since you know it so quick? And she said, you're not following through. So it cost me $120 to follow through. In many of our lives, we get something in our heads, our hearts, but we're not following through on what God has given us to do. And if we want to see a decade, we're going to have to follow through. We're going to have to see what God is doing, apply ourselves to that, and move forward. Because after all, we are a part of a movement, not a monument. See, a movement is a story of your future. A monument is a story to your past. I'm not saying your past is invalid here at World Prayer Tabernacle. It's awesome and it's wonderful, but we're not here to build a monument to worship the past. We're here to build a movement that steps into our future. But if we're not careful, we're going to miss what God is doing and we're going to forget of what, why he put us here. I walked into a coffee shop, a small establishment, you may have heard it, called Starbucks. Walked in one day, and um, it was early, early morning, about 5.30, and I ordered coffee, went to the door, ordered coffee, and I said, I'm sorry, we don't have any coffee. <laughs> I'm looking for the cameras, like, okay. No, 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 I mean, I really, I just need a coffee. To, they said, I'm sorry, everything's broken, we don't have coffee today. I'm like, no. No, come on. I, you, you have coffee. I know you do. And they go, no, we don't. And so I had to drink tea. Okay, tea's okay, but it's not coffee. And so I stepped over to the side, and I watched person to person come up to the counter and order coffee, and like, oh, we don't have that. No. Come on, you do. You're kidding me. <laughs> no, we don't have any. And if we're not careful in church, we become just like a Starbucks without coffee because we have all the church service stuff without Jesus. No, we can, we can get so good at church we forget to just be in love with Jesus. We forget the reason that he put us on this planet. Are you with me? And so what God's doing is he's taking us back and empowering us to see what it looks like. But we don't want to be a Starbucks without coffee, and we don't want to be a church without Jesus. We can't afford to do that because there's a decade at stake here. And so there's a quote here, and it's by Howard Hendricks. It says, my fear for you is not that you will fail, but you will succeed in doing the wrong things. Yeah. World Prayer Tabernacle, let me, let me tell you this. It's not, don't fear failure. Fear that you're going to succeed at the wrong things. So what's the right things? Expanding God's kingdom, people's lives being changed and transformed. 
communities being changed. Come on, is that why we're in it? Are you, is that why you're here today? So we're going to look at the book of Acts. It spans 30 years. It's not the book of theories, not the book of poems. It's not the book of all this other stuff. It's the book of Acts. And so we're going to take a look at this and look at five things over the span of this. And, um, and there's a lot of changes that took place in the book of Acts, but we need to get them because if, we, because if we're, listen, we're a part of a movement that began in Acts and continues today, and that's why we're here on this planet, to continue what began there. Are you with me? We're not here to hold on. We're not here just to, to hope we make it. But that means there's going to be a lot of changes that are going to need to happen. Because the book of Acts is all about change. And so we find it here, and, and there's changes going on. So, and by Acts 4, they're, they're telling them, stop preaching. Stop talking about Jesus. They're threatening you. And so here we find in Acts 4, here it is. Oh, now, O oh Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And after this prayer meeting, the place shook and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they preached the, Lord, preached the word of God with boldness. Prayer and power go hand in hand. And if you're going to make it through this decade, you've got to get in love with Jesus to the point where you want, you want the power of God, but it's found through prayer. And here it is, verse 32. All the believers were united in heart and mind, and they felt that they, were, they, they, um, that they owned was not their own as they shared everything they had. The apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's great blessing was on them all. How many of y'all would like to be blessed? Remember, if you can see God and respond to what he's doing, you shall be most blessed. And here we find that they were a great blessing. The unmerited favor of God was upon them all. So here, they were united in heart. Do you know what united in heart means? It means being in sync. Just for the record, that's not a picture of our five kids. Yeah, you got to be in sync. Come on, you willing to be in sync? You got to be in sync. That means pulling in the same direction together. That means spiritually moving together. Being united in heart, they were going the same way spiritually together. This requires movement. It requires decisions. Are you willing to be in sync? All together, pulling together. It's where we get the word cardiac. But not only does our heart, it says that we need to be united in our minds. That means we need to breathe spiritually together. We need to breathe spiritually together. So our hearts and our minds must be one going into this decade because there's going to be changes and transitions that are here upon us. But we all have a, false sense of what unity really is. We have this thought that unity is all peaceful and great. Unity will get challenged every step of the way. Unity is both practical and powerful. Practical in that they shared everything voluntarily together. They just shared everything. That was practical. And the unity was powerful. Can I just tell you this? Unity isn't unity unless it's accomplishing something. Unity is not the goal. Unity is the means by which we get to the goal, which is stepping out of our comfort zones, forsaking comfort, forsaking convenience, and stepping into the move of God. But it's powerful. Let me ask you a question. As soon as you close your notebook and you stop taking notes and you stop recording what God is doing, you're already in decline because we're not recording and responding to the Word of God. Now, as soon as your notebook goes closed, you stop growing. Now, let me ask you a question. Are you getting older or more mature? No, I'm serious. There's a lot of people that are just getting older. 
No, I'm talking about Christians who've been in church a long time. They just keep getting older, but they're not getting mature. Mature is when you can act and respond, and the way we raised our kids was not to take responsibility for themselves, but we would know that our jobs were done when they could take care of somebody else. That, my friends, is maturity. That, my friends, is stepping into a movement. That, my friends, is a practical and powerful unity. Blessing was on them all. We're not just here, come on, to, to, to hang out. We're here to depopulate hell. This is, this is major work here. Are you with me? This is a major deal. I'm not here today to teach you. I'm here because I need an experience with God based on the Word of God, and I'm going to take heart to this so that I can leave here a different person than when I came in. I don't just want to get good at doing church. I want to get good at becoming like Jesus. And we become like Jesus. Unity is a gift of God given to a group of people to accomplish God's purpose and mission. So here we are. If you want to see the future, you want to be empowered, you've got to see what God is doing and take this gift from God and say it's to accomplish something. So we're going to be one heart, one heart, one mind, practical and powerful. We're moving forward. But the problem is, is we mistaken We mistake unity with agreement. Unity and agreement are two different things. My wife and I, we have unity. We like to eat. But we don't agree when we go to the supermarket, to go to the the shopping shopping center, the supermarket, on how we're going to do it. We disagree greatly. She wants to make it an experience that we do together. I want to see how quick I can get through. Can I beat last week's time? I think we can do it. So we disagree. We get to the store, and there's times when when we say, okay, this is going to be an experience. And there's other times, baby, we ain't got much time. Let's get in here and get out. But we have unity at the end of the day. We're going to eat. We have disagreements all the time on driving. She told me one day when we're driving that if I really love her, I would only drive in the slow lane. I love you, but I can't. And there's times when she points out to me the slow lane's open. And there's times I look at her and say, I got to pass this guy. She told me that one time right before we were making a long trip, an eight-hour trip. I says, baby, if if this is going to be slow lane, fast lane, you're going to have to go separately. You can leave two days early. I'm good. But we always have unity. We're going somewhere. See, see, in, in, in church life, we mistake in unity with agreement because you're going to disagree on the The paint on the walls, the times of the service, the colors of the shirt, who picks the songs, and how loud they are. But at the end of the day, we're going to have unity. We're going to help the hopeless and hurting get healed and headed in the right direction. People ask me, I ask people my church this all the time. I said, how many people here know what I don't like about the building that we're in? And we have five different buildings, so this is all the time. They'll say, oh, I didn't know you didn't like anything about the building. I said, how many of you know what I don't like? And everybody's like, no, I don't know. Do you know? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know. And they're asking, how you know? And I says, you know why you don't know? Because it doesn't matter. And I've learned a long time ago, when nobody asks me my opinion, nobody cares.
But at the end of the day, we're going to win people. We're going to see them changed and transformed. We're going to see expansion, and we're going to keep growing. Man, I would meet at 3 a.m. in the morning if I thought we could get people coming out of the bar and to come to church. We changed the name of our church. Um, it'll be two years ago this March. And um, people were like, why are you going to change the name? And there was a lot of reasons. We just, you know, we went to Bridge City Church. Um, the younger generation needed to embrace it. That's just why we did it. And people said, well, well, huh? what's with this change in the name? I'd said, listen, if I thought more people would meet Jesus, I'd change it every two months. I'm not married to a name. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm connected to Jesus. Call it Babaluki Fellowship for all I care. I mean, as long as people are meeting Jesus, I'm good. But how many people, you know, you start telling your friends, yeah, come to Babaluki. It's like, man, I ain't going there. Mm-mm. No, I'm not feeling the bubaluki thing. Mm-mm. No, what I'm trying to say is we get, we get married to the wrong things. But I want to be in a place like Psalm 133, how wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. For harmony is as precious as the anointing oil, and the Lord has pronounced his blessing. How many of you all would like to be in a place where God pronounces a blessing? Where God's up in heaven going, bless them! I pronounce a blessing! Wouldn't that be a cool thing? Like God's up in heaven, clouds opening, bless them! (laughs) Come on. But we have this weird sense, come on, because if what we're believing for doesn't require sweat, supernatural faith, Nonstop prayer, perseverance, sleepless nights, and all the strength we got, then it's too small. Come on, you want to be empowered to see? You got to get in love with all these things sweat, perseverance, endurance, sleepless nights. Come on, do you want that? No, that's what it's going to take. No, that's what it's going to take. It's going to be inconvenient. But we're going to move forward in unity because this, 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 this next decade is going to have a lot of change and transition to it. But I'm, I'm committed to it. Like, I'm committed to your direction. That's why I'm here. I don't need a place to hear myself talk. I do that when I'm by myself all the time. But what I need is an experience with God that takes me beyond. And I want to be, I want to be connected to a group of people in heart, in mind, that's practical and powerful. Are you with me? See, that's what this is all about. So let's fast forward to Acts chapter 9. In Acts chapter 9, there's a lot of changes, a lot of things happening, a lot of things that are rolling here. In Acts 9, come on, 31, the church then had peace throughout Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and it became stronger as the believers lived in the fear of the Lord and with encouragement of the Holy Spirit. It grew in numbers. Stronger means edified, built up. So the church became stronger. Do you know how you get stronger? If you're lifting weights, you either have to increase the amount of weight or increase the reps to get stronger. Am I right? So if you want to get stronger, church, we're going to have to either increase the weight or increase the reps. See, some Christians are still, they're like with two and a half pounds. Hey, look at me. Look at me. I'm so strong. Look at me. Look at my bicep. But you got to get past that. And say, if you want to grow and you're still doing 2.5 pounds after 20 years, maybe we ought to just try three pounds. Let's not go to 20 or 30. Let's just try three. And then after you do three, then we're going to go to four, then five, and then six, and then 10, and then 15. Church, God is about to increase your reps, and he's about to increase the weight on you. Because the only way you're going to get stronger So that means you're going to have to do something you've never done before. Are you with me? You can't keep doing the same things. Sometimes you have to trick your muscles. 
you have to you have to you have to work out in a way and you have to interrupt your routine. We did that recently. We did worship or we did I preached first one Sunday morning. It was really cool, right at ten o'clock. I got up and I just started preaching. And it was really cool to watch everybody come in at quarter after going, What has happened? Hey, hey, I have a seat. No, I, we wanted to because we all do it. Come on, we all do it. Every there's every pastor I know on the planet says, how do you get people to be on time? No, I'm serious. We wouldn't dare go to a movie late. Go to a movie? Well, I'm, I'm paying $15. Well, maybe you ought to put more than $15 in at church, and then maybe you'll be on time. I don't know. Just a thought. <laughs> Y'all good? No, no, I'm serious. Like, we gotta, we got to get out of our routine. And we got to get into life group. And we got to get to vic- that victory weekend. All the people who tell me they don't need victory weekend, you need it the most. We know it. God knows it. Your spouse knows it. Your mama knows it. Your boss knows it. Everybody knows it. But we convince ourselves we don't need it. Been there, done that. Never, never, never am I going to be a been there, done that. Never. Because I want to get stronger, and I'm going to need to increase the weight. I'm going to need to increase the reps. Come on. This is what we're going to have to do. God is increasing you here. Now, listen, let me just tell you this. I learned this a long time ago. In sports, and whoever here, male or female, that played sports, tell me if I'm right or wrong. When your coach thought you had more inside of you, didn't they challenge you more? When, when they knew you could do better, didn't they say, come on, you can do it. Come on, get back in there. Come on, do this. Come on. They challenged you. But when they knew you, this is as good as it gets for you, they just went, huh. They stopped challenging you, and I believe that the Holy Spirit is still challenging each and every person that can hear my voice right now because God and the Holy Spirit believes there's more inside of you. See, when, so if you're feeling challenged, that's God saying, I believe in you. I believe you can do this. I believe you can walk in unity. I believe you, can, you, you, you have more inside of you. But when God starts giving up on you and you stop being challenged, that means oh, that's as good as it gets for you. How many of you are still feeling challenged? Okay, not everybody. I still got some time left. Come on, two things that we're going to need to become stronger in this verse. Two things. Come on, first of all, the fear of God. Second of all, the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. First of all, the fear of God mentioned over 300 times in the Bible. Come on, the fear of God, the fear of God. It's like I don't like what God doesn't like, and I like what he likes. That's as simple as I can put it. That's it. It's, it's, that's what the fear of God really is to me. I love what God loves. I hate what he hates. God, what do you love? I love that. God, what do you hate? I hate that. That's the fear of God. I want more of the fear of God in my my life because it saves me from myself. And then encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it's paraclesis, not parakeet. See, many people say it's a parakeet. No, it's not a parakeet. It's a paraclete. Paraclesis. It's a coming alongside. It's we need God to come alongside of us. So the bottom line is, what are we doing here at World Prayer Tabernacle that's demanding, God, I need you to come alongside of me? No, what are we going to believe for that says, God, I want you to come alongside of us because unless you're with us, unless we're with you, it's not going to work. Come on. So we need the fear of God, and we need encouragement of the Holy Spirit. So what's the Holy Spirit? We're going we're gonna to believe God for people, come on, to meet Jesus and people to take their next step with God and people to become responsible for others. This is a decade full of this, not just one week. One week you go to life group, that's good. How about a decade full of growing and, 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 and moving forward? Are you with me? That's what I'm in it for. 
And I don't want to settle for just, I don't want to settle for just where we're at. And Pastor Derek and Pastor Bonnie and all the leaders here, thank you for allowing me to come. So how are we going to do this? We're going to go back to one point. And points are going to turn into games. And games are going to turn into sets. And sets are going to turn into a match. And then matches are going to turn into history. But it's going to take all of us to do it. So there's five things I gave you that we're going to need to do in the next decade. Five things. Be united in heart. Be united in mind. A unity that's both practical and powerful. We need the fear of God. And we need encouragement of the Holy Spirit. This is your decade right here. This is it. This is your decade. The fear of God. Come on. This is our decade here. When I, um, when I think about Jesus' church, and I think about our church, um, Bridge City Church, I think of a group of people that, um, that when the first notes played, they all stand to their feet and just begin to worship. I think of a group of people when the word of God's beginning to be preached, everybody can't wait to open their notebooks and let's take notes because God, my Monday through Saturday is about to change. No, I'm serious. We're not even treating the word of God on Sunday morning like it's the word of God. We're treating it like it's, you know, whatever. And we're wondering why we're not having more experiences with God. When I think about church, I think of a line of people outside waiting to get in. I dream about that day that people are longing to just worship Jesus so much that they would get there early and wait in line. I dream about a people so contagiously in love with Jesus that they just naturally serve and they're naturally giving of their finances and of their time because what else would they do? I'm just in love with Jesus. See, when I think of church, I think of change and transformation that's daily happening in people's lives. I think of the hurting and the hopeless that are helped and headed in the right direction. I think of people far from God that's what I think of with church. But we turn it into this little 90-minute exercise we do. But it can't be that. I'm in it from Monday through Saturday. That's what I'm in it for. And recently, um, my wife and I, we were, uh, we were at one of our locations. And uh, they're just really seeing so many transformations and we're sitting there during communion one day I, I was preaching that day there and um and there's all these people filing up for communion and and we're like we're like sitting in the front row and like we're watching all these people come forward and my wife looks at me she goes i, I don't know all these people i go me neither and we just watched all these people that are new to god walking up and doing communion and we're starting to weep and we're like, we looked at each other and said, what if we wouldn't have done this? What if we wouldn't have done this? What if we wouldn't have taken the risk? What if we wouldn't have just said, God, whatever you want to do, do. And beyond my comfort level, beyond what I want, beyond what my church experience should be, God, I want to be a part of something that's so much bigger than me. That's what I long for. So what would happen if we, if we just stay the same? My fear is, is that we're going to succeed at the wrong things. What if we wouldn't have done this? It was um, it's about 18 months ago. I just came to this point in my life where, God, I'm not sure what you're doing with me. There's changes that are happening. And my role has changed so many times over the last year. I, I, I need a job description just to remember what I do. I mean, our, our structure is constantly changing, constantly changing. My role changes all the time and what I'm doing and how I'm doing it because we're continually growing, so my role has to change. Your role is going to have to change. So I was like in a, in a crossroads, and I'm like, God, like, um, 
should I still do what I'm doing? Like, what are we going to do? Or, and I was at this crossroads, and, and I remember we had the week away, and, um, and we're like, God, we just want to love you and serve you. That's it. That's what I'm in it for. And um, I never, I don't even know how to play poker. I don't. I don't know how to play poker. I don't know anything about poker or gambling. I don't. I just don't. Thank God. But I do know this. When you push all your chips into the center, you're all in. I do know this. When you come to the point, when you push everything you got into the center and you don't have, you're not keeping anything back, you're all in. You know what God's doing here today? He's bringing us to a place where we just all in. And trust me, the next decade is going to be full of challenges and struggles as a church. But if you'll do these five things, you're going to make it victorious. I just want to be all in. Still today, God, I'm praying this morning, God, I just want to be all in. I just want to be all in. And on your seats, there's this puzzle piece. I want you to hold this puzzle piece. And if you don't know where it is, you're probably sitting on it. Just a bunch of puzzle pieces. That's all these are. And this is a reminder to you that you're not the whole picture. You're a piece of the picture. No, this is a reminder. This is you. Whenever you think more highly of yourself, this is you. And when people hold back, this is what it looks like right here. When people don't get all in, this is what it looks like. But when people get all in, that's what it looks like. I want to ask you a question. You all in? No, are you all in? Whatever changes you want to do to my role, God, my change, the change in my life, the change in what I'm doing, doesn't matter. It's time for people today to step up, step into the unity God has. So this is what we're going to do today. Um, do we have one of those... Um, Offering, would you, do you have an offering basket or something? Can you bring me one of those, please? Thanks so much. One that's not full of money. I want you to hold on to your piece right now. I want you to have it in your hand. And I don't know, I don't know who's a member here, who's not. I don't know who's visiting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an opportunity to respond to Jesus in a little bit. But uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. So, uh, Pastor Derek and Bonnie, you come with me. We're going to take a walk to the cross. I want you to hold on to this. And um, in just a moment, you're going to have an opportunity to come forward and take your piece and you're not committing to them as people. You're committing to the mission and the vision of World Prayer Tabernacle. And I'm going to be the first and I'm going to walk over and I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to say, I'm all in. Now I know it takes more than just them and they know it takes more than just them and I met with the staff here the other day and there were some staff members um, over youth and over kids and Chris and um, if, I don't know if Caitlin's here could you come up you can, and uh, the youth leaders and kids if you were part of that staff meeting that I was with the other day if, if you're not sure you were in that meeting that's a whole different story but um, I just want you guys to line up right here 
because it takes more than just you. We know that. So you guys are just going to line up right here. And um, the worship team is going to come up in just a second. And you're going to have your opportunity to take your piece of the puzzle. And we're all going to walk over. And all you're going to say, no, 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 you don't need to give an explanation or pray. We're just going to look at them all and say, I'm all in. I'm all in. And then we're going to drop our piece in. And then you're going to make your way back to your seat. Don't leave. We're not done yet. And we're going to allow God to mark this moment for us. So let's stand to our feet. So if you want to just express your all in to the vision and direction, you're saying, well, I don't know about all the vision and direction for a decade. How can I be all in? You don't have to know it all. You don't have to know it all. Do you think they knew it all in the book of Acts? Come on, would you have got, did you know everything marriage was before you got married? Uh-uh. But we got unity. We're staying married. Through everything we've been, we're staying married. We're staying connected. So in this moment, if you want to just express, you're going to come down the center, then out around and back to your seats. Let's be all in, church. each and every one of them, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. And worship team, once you get through, come on back up to the stage. Come on, look at each and every one of them. last time you said, I'm all in. I want the youth of this church to experience God. I'm all in. I want the executive pieces of this church to, to experience God. I'm into every part of this church. Look at them all. Look at them all as you go through there. Look them in the eyes and say, I'm all in. Let God do something deep inside your soul. Let God begin to burn within you. Like the day that you met Jesus. And you just said, God, if you'll take me, I'm yours. Oh, Jesus, we're all in. Jesus. 